What up, what up, Salvador Braden here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Divas 5 YouTube channel. On this channel, I talk about everything crowdfunding, e-commerce, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, but I also talk about other topics, so for example, marketing. And that's really the, the focus of today's show is to understand how to market anything how to market anything, whether it's a new product, whether it's something you're trying to promote your own business. If you're stumbling on this video and you're like, I wanna learn how to market, this video is for you. I'm gonna go through and break that down and demystify that in my usual fashion. Again, my name is Sal and let's get right into it. So there are different things that are happening at each stage of the funnel, which I'm going to be talking about. And I'm going to kind of put it into terms that at least I understand, and I think are easier to understand than the way that marketing jargon is or that the textbook example is. So that's kind of the way that we're going to talk about this. Okay. So again, this might be considered a marketing funnel. You can think of this as kind of mapping consumer behavior. Um, however word you want to use it, it's really understanding the process. And the more you can understand the process, the more you can enter into the process. For example, if you're trying to go from A to Z, let's say you're trying to go from Texas to Florida, and you don't know that it's going to be a long journey or you can take a flight, you maybe you start walking, you're like, wow, it's going to be pretty long, right? You got to have a map. You need a map to understand not only the human psyche, but if you're trying to get from point A to B, where it is you have to move through first. Okay, so this will help you market a physical product. Again, this will help you market a service. It'll help you market your own business, whatever it is. And also talk about some other ways to kind of get started with this. So the first one is what I call attention, but really a lot of other people will call it awareness. Now, I prefer to think of it in the terms of the prospect, of the person who might buy your product or service, the person trying to market you. It makes a lot more sense to me. So people will call this awareness, right? I call it attention. What does this look like? I want you to imagine this, okay? I want you to imagine a bunch of eyeballs here, and this is a guy here, and he's literally looking at his phone, okay? He's just zeroed in on his phone here. And we'll just say this is like he's looking at Instagram or Facebook, and here are his little hands, all right? He's looking at the phone, and He's razor attention on whatever it is he's looking at. Maybe that's a new video, that's an ad, this could be something that's um, popping up in his feed. You have his attention. Attention is a resource, okay? And you can't be spending your attention usually in multiple ways. So you could have a little bit of attention on one thing, like what your wife's saying, right? While you're also watching a football game, right? <laughs> like you can split your attention a tiny bit, right? Or, you know, if you're sniffing the other, or what your husband's saying while you're doing, you know, crossword puzzles, or you're doing whatever it is that you love to do, or you're working out, or you're doing fitness, or you know, whatever you enjoy doing. There's different ways you can split your attention. But more often than not, your attention is usually on one thing. And that's usually what your eyes are on, what you're thinking about, what you're focused on. So for example, let's just say you're at a party and you're talking to someone, you're like, hey, I don't know, things are going well. Uh, yeah, it's great, uh, it's, it's cool, like this is happening in my life. And you're giving kind of like one word, some not so great answers. And your mind is really thinking about something else. Your attention isn't really in that moment, right? Your attention is somewhere else. But if you bring your attention back to this moment, which is a lot of what Eastern religions do, Eastern philosophy, right, is being in the present moment to, to feel that and to understand that, all of a sudden you're like with that person and they can feel it because your attention is completely in that moment. You're not thinking about anything else, right? It feels different. So attention usually is tied to where your mental focus is and what you're allowing to receive into your mind. Great example is you're watching a movie. If the movie doesn't have your attention, are you going to feel emotions? Not unless there's a big bang and you're like, what? What happened, right? <laughs> or there's a jump scare and you're like, huh, got my attention, right? Got my attention. So attention is so important because what it does is it allows a new message to enter your mind. Think about this. You're watching a movie, okay? When you have rapt attention at that movie, all of a sudden you start to feel the emotions of the main character. You start to feel the emotions when it's a very scary scene or it's an action sequence. You can feel your heart starting to beat faster right? Things happen. You can actually empathize. Or if it's a sad scene and you almost feel like you want to cry a little bit. I know guys don't cry, right? We don't cry, but you can almost feel a little bit like that. So attention, also known as awareness, is the top piece of the funnel because if you don't have someone's attention, you cannot influence them as a marketer. You cannot influence them if you don't have their attention. Attention is usually measured by eyeballs, by how much is someone attentive, 
Uh, are they receiving the messages that you're putting out? If you don't have their attention, you're not going to be able to influence them. The second piece of the marketing puzzle is actually more important than getting attention. And I'll talk a little bit about why. The next piece of the marketing puzzle, we're going to draw a little bit of a thing here, is what's called interest. And interest almost always is, we, we sort of categorize that, or we kind of, I'd say quantify that in some kind of behavior, okay? Some kind of behavior. And I'll kind of talk about what that means. So in this example, with this little guy, we're gonna say that he's here and he's in line at Starbucks and he's looking at his little, uh, his little smartphone, that's a massive smartphone, I guess maybe his iPad, right? And he decides, he has our attention, he decides to click a link. So he comes over here and he clicks on his little phone and he clicks a link, goes somewhere and maybe fills out a form. Or maybe he goes somewhere and does something else like um, request more information, right? Or he calls someone, he does something, right? When you have someone's interest, they tend to show you that by behavior of some kind. But we need to rewind a little bit to understand what is interest, okay? Interest is that not only does this thing have my attention, but it's relevant to me, that I'm interested in learning more, that it could solve a problem that I may have, that there's some way that this thing can fit into my life. Interest can also just be sustained attention, okay? And then this is getting a little bit more um, nitty gritty here, but for an example, let's just say your movie, right? If the movie has your attention, it's got your attention for a little bit. If it has your interest, you're watching it for a very long period of time. So you're investing time in actually watching that. So you're not doing something, you're not spending money, right? Or you're not putting your own effort into it. You're just investing your own time into watching that particular movie. Interest shows that this thing is important to me right now. And therefore it's taking up a piece of my life right now. You are literally saying when you're watching a movie, I'm investing two hours of my life, which I could be doing other things into this moment because of some kind of a perceived reward. Right. Think about that. You could do anything else, but you're deciding to actually invest that time in watching this movie. Think about that. Right. Or you decide to go with your friends and do something. You could spend that time otherwise. Or you decide to work really hard and hustle with your business. You could be doing other things. It has your attention and it has your interest. Now, it's not enough just to get attention. And TikTok is, I think, this crack cocaine. Right. When it comes to attention, it's because it's getting people's attention and maybe even spiking their emotions a bit. And you're just kind of scrolling through videos and this app itself has your attention. Does that individual who is putting out that TikTok have your attention and interest? More often than not, no. Now, in some cases they do, but a lot of the times not. So it's very easy to get attention nowadays. And we do that by having something very sensationalistic, something that's spiking your emotions, right? But if you don't follow that up with interest and getting someone's interest in some way, it's very difficult to have your marketing work out for you, whether it's your business, a product, or something you're trying to sell. You're never going to pull them into your world to go from attention to then they're actually interested in learning more, in following you, in getting more content, in maybe at some point actually having a transaction with you where they actually part with money and give it to you because they believe in something that you're doing or a service that you're rendering in a good way. And you're providing something that's gonna make their life so much better, a new product that's gonna help them, a new thing that's gonna delight them or light up their life or whatever it is, right? So interest tends to be categorized with behavior. If they're not taking action, they're not taking some kind of behavior, you tend to not really have their interest, which might mean you got their attention, but they weren't curious enough. Keyword, curious enough in order to take a behavior, to take an action, okay? And this can be mapped in a lot of different ways. Now, when this happens, usually there's some kind of an offer, there's some kind of a reason that this person is engaging with you. So for example, let's just say that I'm trying to buy a new lighting fixture for my house. I know, right? How exciting is that? Lighting fixture for my bedroom. And I've got a bunch of different lighting fixtures got my attention. It was like kind of interesting. And then I saw one that kind of looked the way that I wanted. So it got my interest. So I started to learn more and it started to move into a different phase when it came to acquiring that product for my house or for my bedroom or for whatever, right? And this is really where we were to talk about consideration, okay? Consideration, okay? And it can also, you know, say evaluation. We can use a lot of different words for that. So when someone is considering something, 
How does it usually look? Well, they begin to want more information for why, right? So if you're considering going out for Chinese food later because you feel like that's kind of interesting, right? What do you begin to do? You begin to gather more information. Or like, I love sushi, man. I do love, I love sushi actually. And um, it's sometimes hard to find really good sushi places, right? So maybe I have that interest and like I saw a commercial something and I'm like, oh, that sushi looks so good. I want some sushi at some point. And I, I see or I see a movie and I see some sushi. And it gets me just in that mood, right? It's like, oh, I want some sushi later. Then I have to start to gather information. I start to consider things, right? So consideration tends to be a very difficult phase that people don't typically understand. Because just because you have someone's interest does not mean they are going to convert into a buyer. Let me say that again. Just because you have someone's interest does not mean they're going to convert. Now this is not actually the stage where conversion happens, but this is the stage that determines the percentage of people that are interested that are going to convert in some way into an offer, into buying something. If you have, let's just say a thousand people that are interested in something, that doesn't mean they're all gonna buy. I'm sure you know that, right? Just because they're interested doesn't mean they're gonna show up, right? So <clears throat> consideration is really when you're doing a few different things. So first of all, you're filling in information. So part of consideration is logical. A large part is also emotional. So we're gonna continue with our little example here. So we're just gonna say that this individual is going through the life. And again, these sta this stage could happen in a matter of months, it could happen in a matter of days, it could happen in a matter of hours, it could happen in a matter of minutes, going through this entire process. It really depends on the product and the market. Um, so this person will just say, right, they are going through their life and they find themselves thinking a little bit more about this product or they're starting to get email notifications or they start to get social media posts and they start to consider this more. So not only do you have their attention and their interest and they're interested in this, but they're starting to begin to consider it. They're starting to feel certain emotions toward this decision. You're like, no, I think I kind of really want this thing. This is super cool. This is really exciting. I didn't know it could do this. Wow, this is so interesting. I just found out that this new fact, right? So it's both logical and emotional. There's a bit of it both. But I like to think of this as kind of laying breadcrumbs. So if like this is a person and they will just say like they eat bread, <laughs> you like a duck, you're laying breadcrumbs and you're getting them to move along this path, okay? So it's part logic, it's part emotion, and they're moving along this path. And the more that they move along, the more excited they become, the more interested they become, the more they begin to actually consider buying and owning this thing. And you'll have some people that move through this really fast and they're like, show me where to buy this. I want this thing, right? How do I do this? And they might just click and might actually go to your page and buy it or whatever it is. But they have to go through this consideration phase where you maybe share more information or they're hunting down more information themselves about the product and they're being considered in a much more serious way. So they're turning just their vague interest into what is likely going to be a in-person, in-their-life decision. Now this goes beyond, I'd say, just you know, physical products and those kind of things. It's really about coming from just an idea, getting someone's attention, you know, becoming curious, getting an idea, to having a real-world interaction or real-world action, whether that is joining a movement, supporting a political party, buying a product. It really goes across the spectrum. It could even be something that's like going to visit a restaurant. You're moving closer and closer towards getting this communication to influence that person's real world behavior, okay? Very, very nuanced, but really powerful. So the more they begin to consider this, the more they move along this chain. Really cool. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. Now, people will debate on the next stages, and there are so many different types of products and services and things you're trying to do out there. So, you know, some of these are a little bit, I'd say, flexible. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of go with what the main ones are and we'll kind of stick to that and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. So after someone is considering, right, this, they tend to form what's called intent, okay? So intent is usually logical, some form of a mental decision, okay? But it's not yet in the world decision. It's like the kind of decision you make where you're like, 
I want Chinese tonight, right? Or I want could go to this sushi later, but you still aren't there at the sushi place, right? Things can still happen from now, you making that mental decision to you showing up at the sushi place that prevents that reality from coming to be, right? Things are still happening. Emotions are happening. Random events are happening, right? Um, maybe there are also things like you find out the sushi place is closed on that day, right? Things are happening. You might have the intent. You might have made the decision that I want to go and show up, but things still might come into play that prevent that from happening. Same thing when it comes to e-commerce, right? You might have the intent to buy something, but other things crop up between this stage and the next stage when you then back out from that decision later on or you change your mind later on. And you know, there's that saying, but I think everyone has a prerogative to change their mind when it comes to being a consumer online. And this is kind of how it is. So there is one other stage here, and we'll also illustrate this a tiny bit. So the next stage, I'm gonna kind of breeze through these a little bit, valuation. Okay, and then purchase or action. I'm gonna say purchase, but really what I mean is action here. So first of all, intent. This is a person who, again, they're, they've made the decision. They're like, yes, yaha, right? And this is a guy who's just like kind of happy. He's like, yes, I know, I want this. I've made the decision, yes. I'm moving forward with this, right? Still, while he says that, while he maybe even verbalizes that to you, he's like, dude, I'm gonna buy this thing. When you come out with it, when you know we go to the sushi place this Thursday, I'm gonna be there, I wanna go. But how many times have you had someone say that, but they don't end up showing up? Or something happens in their life, normal, that they can't attend, right? So just because they've said it and they've made the intent and they are intending to do something, doesn't mean at the end of the day that they're going to do it, okay? And this is why we don't believe always what people are saying. We believe their actions and we believe where they are on the process. We don't necessarily just take what they're saying as golden, right? So there's an evaluation phase that then happens. Now evaluation is what I call sort of going in and just checking themselves. First of all, their emotions. Second of all, um, last minute decision or last minute evaluation, sorry, last minute evaluation, and uh, specs, okay, specs. So uh, that's gonna kind of comprise a few different things. So one is emotion. So the person's gonna show up, let's just say it's the product page, if you're doing an e-commerce um, kind of play or something like that, and they're gonna just kind of check with themselves, like, is this thing cool or not? They're gonna just validate everything that they, that they felt before, looking at your marketing, they're gonna reevaluate, it, reassess and just be like, do I feel as cool? And if it's anywhere just like in the ballpark, they'll be like, great. You know, it doesn't have to be the same level of hype or emotion. If you can have it be a peak emotional state when they show up here, you're gonna have just wild success. But it doesn't necessarily have to be, okay? It has to be close. And the other thing is that they're going to begin to evaluate this decision. So we have a part of our brain that prevents us from making really stupid decisions. Now some of us don't always use that brain myself included, right? So sometimes people will make impulsive decisions. Sometimes we'll make decisions without really thinking about it too much. And that logical side of the brain, we kind of silence it a little bit. And this can actually be super useful if you're trying to be successful, if you have to plow through negative emotions and difficulty and fear, it can be very useful to kind of silence that side of your brain. So you just push forward and you do it, man. You freaking do it, right? But when it comes to buying a product, sometimes that, that brain will start to get more active and start to be a little bit more chatty and then start to be like, okay, so what are the specs, right? What is the price point at the end of the day? What is it made of? Oh, I didn't notice it. What is the return policy, right? If I don't like this thing, what are some of the comments on this product page? What are other people saying? There's more intensive screening and evaluation at that last minute when they're trying to make that decision. Not always the case. Different types of buyers out there. Some people will just buy it immediately, like I said. We're trying to encompass at least the phases that most people go through, okay? So this is what I call when objections come up. So objections and conditions. Objections are usually emotional. Conditions are usually logical. So what's a condition? Condition is I'm going out of town. I need to get this product by within two days. Otherwise, I'm gonna buy it later, right? That person is like, I need this now um, because maybe I'm moving or something like that later and I'm gonna have a completely different place and I can't buy it now. Or another condition would be, does this ship into my country? <laughs> does this go to this, the country that I'm part of? 
Um, you know, when it comes to the shipping and the actual price point, can I afford it? Is it in my budget? These, some of these times, these are conditions. Other things might be the actual specs of the product. They look at the specs and they're kind of analyzing they are on more of a logical frame. Other ones might be emotional or like, okay, I feel really good about this, but there's so many negative reviews. Ah, I don't know. Is this a good decision? Maybe not. Click off, right? So there, there are emotional and there are logical things that happen in that person's decision-making process. And this bleeds into the real world as well. So when it comes to the real world, We'll say, for example, you show up at the sushi place or you're very close and you notice that it's like a hole in the wall and you're like, I don't want to eat sushi, which is obviously raw fish at a hole in the wall restaurant. I thought it looked nicer online. Uh, maybe we'll go to a different place, right? That evaluation and that, that stage caused you to prevent you from taking action despite the fact that the marketing was working really well up until that point. And then finally, if you get through the evaluation phase, Ching, you get a purchase, you get a conversion, you get someone taking action. And again, this moves beyond just you know e-commerce or moves beyond making decisions when it comes to buying things. It also has to do with human behavior in general. You can get someone and influence someone to take an action of some sort, maybe voting for a particular party or engaging in a community initiative or be giving money to a nonprofit organization, right? This really goes beyond that. And this is really something that when you master these different phases, it is a power. It's like a superpower. I can't tell you. Um, I feel like sometimes when you're doing, when we're doing marketing campaigns for clients, it's like we have a superpower because we can turn people that have never met the client before, have never encountered the product before, from the first time meeting it to then making a purchase decision just like that. How cool is that, man? That is so cool. It's like you got a magic wand in some ways. Now I have to say something. I do have to say something. I really have to say something to you, which is only use this for good products. Only use this for you know, benevolent reasons. Don't misuse and abuse this information, please. This is meant to be educational, useful for you. I try to put out these free videos that are loaded with valuable information, just like this, sharing secrets that the world does not want you to know so that you can positively impact the world, so you can do cool stuff. So you, know, you can create things that delight people. I'm not talking about using this in nefarious ways. So please keep that in mind. But I hope that this at least sheds some light on this process. And if you wanna talk about for your business, how to implement something like this, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. We're also starting to do more things in the way of, of helping business owners that are out there uh, when it comes to their business, et cetera, their marketing. So book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me down below at the link I'm about to mention at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That link is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching. Crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Go to that link. You can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Even if it doesn't seem relevant to you, you're filling out some of the information, you don't fill out all the information on that form. Just be aware of that. You can book a coaching call with me that way. And we can talk about how to implement this for your business. Or if you're learning this yourself, you can kind of get a little bit more behind the scenes with some of the other stages that are in between here. And some of the ones that you know, are a little bit different depending on the type of product and category and what you're trying to sell and market that we can talk about. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Come subscribe and I'll see you next time. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman.